One of the biggest challenges, the biggest hurdles, the biggest trials that every English learner goes through is speaking English with confidence. That confidence piece is so hard to grasp. Sometimes you feel nervous. You feel uncertain about the words you're using, or if the person listening to you can actually understand that confidence in yourself is sometimes hard to find. Well, this week, I am going to give you seven simple steps that will help you speak English with confidence. Are you ready? Well then I'm teacher Tiffany. Let's jump right in. Step number one, start a journal and write in English every single day. You heard me right. In order for you to speak English with confidence, you must first start by writing in a journal every day. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute, teacher Tiffany, I, I want to speak not right. What we're talking about is organizing your thoughts because when you have your ideas organized, when you know what you want to say, you will speak <laughs> with confidence. If I ask you your name right now, you'd probably respond. Watch. Hey, what's your name? You just said your name without pausing very confidently. Why? Because you know your name. When you know information, it's easy to speak confidently about that information. Well, writing every single day in English will help you organize your thought and help you know the information when you speak English. So here's reason number one, this will help you organize your thoughts and express yourself effectively. The main part of speaking confidently is again, Hey, effectively communicating what you already know. So again, this will help you organize your thoughts as you figure out what you want to write every single day. The second reason it expands your usage of new English vocabulary words, man. When I think about this one, it brings to mind when I was trying to learn Korean. I was trying to learn tons of words and I literally remember this moment like it was yesterday. I was sitting in my bed. I was sitting and, and I was studying literally about two to 300 vocabulary words in preparation for our Korean test. And as I was sitting there at about 4 AM struggling to memorize every word on the paper, all of a sudden I thought to myself, Tiff, you're memorizing these words for the exam and you'll do well on the test, but later on you won't be able to use the words. And I paused. I realized in that moment, something had to change. I couldn't just memorize the words. I needed to use them in real life. So when you write in a journal every day, it will force you. It will help you use the words that you have been learning. Maybe you learned a new word while watching a television program, or maybe you learned a new English word while reading something. When you go to your journal, use that word from the TV show. Use that word from the book you were reading. This will help you speak confidently because you're using what you actually have learned writing in your journal. And finally, writing in your journal every day actually builds your confidence in expressing ideas and communicating in English. When you are writing in a journal, you have to communicate something. You can't just write random words. Your brain literally goes into another area, another section and says, okay, Hey, we need to access these words that she is looking for. We need to access this information that he's looking for. Let's do this. And you start organizing your ideas, organizing your thoughts and communicating a clear idea. As you write in your journal every day, we're talking about helping you speak English confidently. Step number one, write in your English journal every day. You determine how long 
You might only write for five minutes. That's okay. Just be consistent. All right. Number one, again, step one, write in your journal in English every day. Step number two, another important one, memorize common English phrases and use them in different contexts. Now you're probably smiling because I just mentioned how I was memorizing all of my Korean words and how stressful it was. But notice for this step, it's not just memorizing the phrases. It's what practice using them in different contexts. This is something I did a lot with my students when I was living in South Korea. I would teach them a vocabulary word and then I'd help them apply that vocabulary word to many different parts of their day. For example, let's say I taught you the word, um, let's say elated. Many of my students in my academy, they love this word because I teach it to them and we use it a lot. Again, if you're not in my academy, Hey, come on and join us. All you have to do is go to www.dailyenglishlessons.com dailyenglishlessons.com. Join us over there. But I taught them the word or I teach them even now. I taught them the word in the past elated. Then I said, Hey, what are you elated about in the morning? Ooh, I'm elated to wake up early in the morning because I love exercising. Perfect. What are you elated about in the afternoon? Ooh, in the afternoon, I always feel elated because I get to spend time with my best friend. You see what's happening, right? You're learning a new phrase. You're learning a new word, but you're immediately applying it to different situations. Again, practice using it in different contexts. Now here's the first reason why this is so important. This provides you with ready-made expressions to use in everyday conversations, ready-made expressions. So once you learn a word or a phrase force and push yourself to use it in different contexts while you're practicing, when you then later on go to have a conversation in English, you won't be nervous. Why? Because you've already practiced using that word or that phrase in different contexts when you were practicing at home or maybe with your friends. Now in conversation, you're like, yeah, I was elated yesterday when I met my friend for lunch. <gasps> I used it with such confidence. Yes, because you did this step. The second reason is it will help you become more spontaneous and fluent when you speak English. Because now you have some tools to use when you go to have that conversation. Ooh, I've been practicing. I imagined this situation happening. So now that the situation is here, now that it's the time to use the word, I'm not nervous. I feel good. Let me use this word in the sentence. This happens so many times. I have literally watched my students. And I love being an English teacher. And, and you know, I'm very passionate about what I do. I love watching this happen to my students. I have seen students literally learn a word with me, learn a phrase, or they've watched one of the videos uh, based on the 365 daily English lessons. Then we'll have a live class with all of the other members. Now I know what day that student is on. So I know which word he learned, which phrase she learned. Then we come to our group meeting and the student uses it perfectly with confidence. And I smile as a teacher. Sometimes I feel like a mom watching my children just grow and flourish and live life and speak English with confidence. Why? Because they've been practicing how to use the words in different contexts. So now they're able to be spontaneous. All right. Now reason number three. It builds your confidence in expressing ideas and communicating in English. You've already practiced using the word or expression in various contexts. So now you actually are comfortable and confident expressing yourself using that word or that phrase, a very important step. So step number two, again, memorize common English phrases and practice using them in different contexts. What about step number three, step number three, record yourself speaking and then listen to it in order to identify areas for improvement. This is the step 
<laughs> that so many of my students, when I first tell them, Hey, I need you to get your phone. I need you to record yourself speaking in English. They pause and say, ah, teacher Tiffany, I, I don't think I'm, I'm ready for that. And I smile to myself because I've seen it happen each and every time I speak to an English learner. And I tell them, listen, if you trust me, if you trust me, I promise I will get you to your goal. And I watch them as they trust me and they make their first video nervous, right? But then they do it again and again. And again, you see what happens is when you record yourself, you will naturally almost automatically go back and watch it. You know more than you realize. And when you watch the video, you will catch the things that you need to work on. Oh, I didn't realize when I, when I say that word, I kind of don't say it the right way or, Oh, I didn't realize that I don't really look at the camera. When I get nervous, you will start self correcting. This is such a powerful step to speaking English with confidence. So here are the main three reasons why this is so important. Step number one, excuse me, step number three, the first reason it allows you to self assess your own speaking skills and identify areas for improvement. Like I just mentioned, second, it helps you notice pronunciation errors that you might not be aware of while speaking. And third, it also enables you to track your progress over time and see how your speaking skills develop. I have one student. His name is Fred. Hey, Fred. Fred has been with me from the beginning. Fred has, uh, not only become one of my favorite students, he's literally become a very close friend. I talk to him on a regular basis because we are friends now, right? Fred is a great guy. I remember Fred. When he first joined my academy, I remember the first conversation we recorded Fred sweetheart. He was speaking. He was a bit nervous speaking to me on the video, right? And I was patient. I enjoy speaking with students. So we had a great conversation. However, when you look at a video of Fred today, speaking English, you will be absolutely amazed at how much he has improved. Fred literally teaches classes in English. Now you heard me right. Fred is teaching classes in English, helping other English learners. He went from being nervous and shy to now being a leader, helping other English learners. And we can track his progress because we have videos. This is why it's so important to remember this step record yourself. Yes. It's going to feel a little bit awkward in the beginning, but it will help you speak English with more confidence. Many times you think your teacher, your English teacher, I'm happy to be your teacher. I love it. You think your English teacher is the only individual able to assess your English, but it's actually not true. You also can recognize many things about your English speaking skills. Start recording yourself. Trust me, you will see improvement. So again, step three, record yourself speaking and then listen to it to identify areas for improvement. Now we're going to move on to step number four, but I want to remind you after each lesson, I also have a practice lesson. So if you already have the English with Tiffany app, all you have to do is right after this video, go directly to your phone open up the app and practice what you are learning. You'll get a quiz to see if you understood what I've been teaching you in this video. Now, if you don't have the app, please click the link in the description. All right. English with Tiffany, you can download it for free, test out some of the lessons and practice along with me every single week. You heard me right every single week. So there's so many lessons in the app, but I want you to understand it's not about just watching an English lesson. It's not about just watching an English teacher passionate about helping you. This is a partnership. I am willing to use my time to help you achieve your goal. But my friend now, after this lesson, the ball will be in your court. 
you have to practice what you're learning. You have to make sure you're understanding. So go to the app English with Tiffany after this lesson. The link again is in the description and practice what you are learning. I believe in you. You can do it. All right, let's keep going. Let's move on to step number four. Step number four is join online forums or social media groups and interact with other English learners and native speakers. Now, this is something that I hear quite often from English learners online from around the world. Tiff, I want to improve my English, but there's no one around me who speaks English. Or Tiff, I want to speak English with confidence, but I've never even had a conversation with a native English speaker. Here's the beauty of the time that we're living in right now. The internet is everywhere. You're watching me right now because of the internet. My friend, step number four, you can do it. It's free. Join an online forum. Start speaking to other people. They don't need to know that you're an English learner. Just join the conversation. As you join the conversations, first, it's going to improve your ability to understand your comprehension skills, but it's going to do so much for your confidence, getting in the conversations, letting people know your ideas. This is a very important step to help you speak English fluently and confidently. So this gives you a platform to practice written and spoken English by engaging in discussions on various topics. This is so important, helping you expand your understanding and also helping you expand your ideas and your ability to communicate those ideas in English. Next, it allows you to learn from native speakers, insights and perspectives on different cultural and linguistic matters. Americans, we like to express ourselves. We like to express our ideas and our opinions, and you'll learn so much when you jump into the conversations, this will help you also speak English confidently. The third reason is it provides a space to ask questions and receive support from a community of like-minded English learners. So this reason is specifically related to you joining a forum or a group online of English learners. There are literally hundreds of thousands of groups online. Some just have native English speakers while others are directed to English learners. Join as many as you'd like. If you are in a group with other English learners, there's something that happens when English learners come together, individuals who have the same goal working to achieve the exact same thing. They start to encourage each other. I've seen this happen over and over again. And I'm actually, for those watching, I'm actually opening up my phone right now because again, for those in my Academy, I have a telegram group, a private telegram group just for my students. And every single day, there are over 2000 students in here, right? English learners. I don't even speak in the group. I might post something once every two or three weeks, but every day students from all around the world, there we go. Students from all around the world are talking all throughout the day, helping each other understand more. Speaking English, encouraging each other. This is what happens when you join an online group. You start encouraging each other. We're talking about seven simple steps to help you speak English confidently. Isn't it interesting that it's not just about memorizing words. It's not just about staying in your own little, little space. No, speaking English confidently is about also reaching out to others. So don't forget step four, join online forums or social media groups. The fifth step is also important. Practice speaking English in front of a mirror to improve your confidence and your body language. Next to recording yourself using your phone. This is my other favorite step. Why? Because, oh man, when you have to stare in the mirror 
and speak English. It's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good, but you're looking at yourself. There's something that happens psycho psychologically, even though there's not another person in front of you. The very fact that you are looking at yourself actually helps you overcome the nervousness that you experience when there is someone standing in front of you. Listen to me. I've been a teacher for a long time. I have literally taught now hundreds of thousands of English learners, but this even worked. I'll tell you something very quickly. Story time will be at the end. So don't go anywhere. One of my close friends from college, an American, her English is great. This is not an issue that only English learners face. So anyways, my friend, she's starting her social media empire. She's uh, a travel blogger and she's really good, but just like you, she was having a little bit of trouble feeling nervous in front of the camera. Now she's not a nervous person, but there's something that happens when you put yourself in front of a camera. It's like, Ooh, wait a minute. Or when you have to speak in front of someone, there's a measure of nervousness. And I told her, I said, listen, I told her to record herself similar. Look at yourself. Basically force yourself to get through that emotion of nervousness of uncomfortableness. And I guarantee you'll improve. It took about maybe two or three weeks. She looks great on camera. She's comfortable. The same thing will happen as you look in the mirror at yourself in the very beginning, you're going to say, what am I doing? I'm talking to myself. Why am I doing this? But the more you do it, the more you will be able to speak English with confidence. You just have to overcome that feeling of nervousness or that uncomfortable feeling. So the reason number one is reason number one, it boosts your confidence by getting you used to seeing yourself speaking in English. You're getting used to seeing yourself. You're actually encouraging yourself like, Oh, wait a minute. I am speaking in English. I, I am speaking English. You're watching yourself and indirectly encouraging yourself. Second reason it gives you the opportunity to observe and improve your body language, your facial expressions and gestures while speaking. I've been told by many English learners around the world, and maybe you were one of them that they love watching my English lessons because I look so passionate. I really am like, this is very true. Like I'm not acting at all, but look at my body language right now. If you're watching this lesson, my hands, I'm a very expressive teacher, right? I smile a lot. I'm excited. I enjoy what I'm doing. If I all of a sudden change my body language, my posture changed, my hands went down, my facial expressions just, oh, okay, I'm going to teach you today. All of a sudden you'd feel different. But when you can see your own body language, you'll start to fix things. Oh, let me, let me put my shoulders back a bit. Let me stand a little bit taller. Let me smile just a little bit. We love your smile. You know what? Smile real quick. Uh huh. Right now. Go ahead and smile. Oh, I love it. I love it. Something happens when you change your facial expression. When you're speaking to someone, you can fix these things while practicing in the mirror. And reason number three, it allows you to practice maintaining eye contact and having a confident posture during conversations. Listen, right now I'm looking at a camera lens, right? But I have learned over time that this is not just a camera lens. It's you. It's you, my friend. I'm looking at you. So you get to practice eye contact focusing when you're expressing yourself and not feeling nervous. This step is extremely important. Once again, practice speaking English in front of a mirror. Now, step number five is another one that I want you to pay attention to step number five, excuse me, number six, engage in role plays or simulations to practice real life conversations. So again, role play. Notice that as we're going through these steps, we're building, right? You started alone. Then you join an online group. You have the mirror practice. Now we're getting to this role play with other English learners. This is a very, very important step. Now you're putting into practice what you've learned. 
You're a little less nervous, so you're able to speak English with other people. But this role play part, let me explain. Reason number one why this is so important. This prepares you for real life situations where you need to communicate in English, such as job interviews or business meetings. So when you, along with other English learners, practice, again, role playing, different situations, when you later on get in those situations, your brain will remember, ah, we've been here before. Ah, we've practiced this. Let's say what we practiced. It will help you. Reason number two, this helps you become comfortable using English in specific contexts, such as ordering food in a restaurant or making hotel reservations. For example, something you've practiced. I know for a fact that you've practiced. Watch this. How are you? Yep. I know you said it. I'm fine. Thank you. And you, you didn't even have to pause to think about it. It automatically came out, right? Why? Because you've done it over and over and over again. You've used it over and over again. This is why role playing is so important. It will make it come out naturally. Whatever expression you've learned, whatever words you've learned, when you do role play with other English learners, later on, you'll see the benefits. You'll be able to speak confidently. And finally, this reason. It allows you to practice different roles and perspectives, which enhances your ability to adapt to different speaking situations. When you're participating in role play, right? One time you might be the interviewer. The next time you might be the one being interviewed. Well, when you are the interviewer, you'll start thinking like an interviewer, which will actually help you when you go to that interview, you'll remember, okay, this is how I felt when I was saying, or when I was speaking like the interviewer. So I I'm understanding how the interviewer is thinking these things all affect your ability to speak English confidently. It's all about understanding how to express your ideas understanding how people are thinking as they're having these conversations. So again, step six, engage in role plays. Now, step number seven, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Instead, embrace them as opportunities to improve. This is the last, but most important step. So many English learners have come to me over my years as a teacher saying, Tiff, I really, really want to speak English fluently, but I keep making mistakes. I can't do this or I, I can't do this. Stop being afraid of making mistakes. Let me explain why. When you stop being afraid, it will help you learn from your mistakes and understand areas where you need improvement. Everyone makes mistakes, including native English speakers. Embrace that fact. When you embrace it, when you're not afraid of making mistakes, you'll just learn from them. Oh, okay. I made that mistake. Let's keep it moving. You'll stop being so afraid and you'll embrace them. Next. This builds resilience and confidence by realizing that, oh, making mistakes is a normal part of the language learning journey. Listen, my niece, my youngest niece is six years old. She's not a speaker like a Ted talk speaker. Why? Because she's still learning English. She speaks English fluently, but she does not speak like a Ted presenter, right? A TEDx presenter can speak eloquently, express his or her ideas. So along her journey of becoming a great speaker, because I'm saying as her auntie, she's going to be a great speaker one day, she's going to make mistakes, but she's okay with that. She's okay with making mistakes and realizing, oh, this is just a part of my journey as I'm improving myself. You have to think the same way. And number three. The third reason is it encourages you to take risks and push yourself to speak English without fear of making errors. My niece is not afraid of speaking to me. And when she doesn't know something, she says, TT, that's what she calls me. TT, how do I say this? Or if I say something, a word that she's never heard, she immediately says, TT, what's that? Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Push yourself. 
Put yourself in situations that maybe in the past would have been uncomfortable for you. But now push yourself. It's okay. Make mistakes, make more mistakes. This is probably something you haven't heard another English teacher tell you. I'm telling you make more mistakes. We're talking about helping you speak English with confidence. My friend, these steps are going to help you achieve your English goal, change your mindset, and you will definitely speak English with confidence. I really hope you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope it helps you finally achieve your goal of speaking English with confidence. I'll talk to you next week. You still there? <laughs> you know what time it is. Sing it with me. It's story time. Hey, I said it's story time. <laughs> All right. For today's story, I want to tell you a short story. We had a longer lesson for today. So I want to tell you a short story. And it's about one of my favorite teachers from when I was in high school. And something she told me that stuck with me. She was my art teacher. Her name was Miss Halstead, an amazing lady, an amazing artist. And I remember one day, it was during my lunch period. I was just, you know, after I ate lunch, I, I used to kind of shoot around in the gym after eating lunch, right? But today, on this day, I just felt like, oh, let me just take a walk around my high school. So I was walking around the high school and I happened to pass by my art teacher's room. So I walked into Ms. Halstead's room and she was sitting at her desk. And I noticed that she was sitting at her desk, very focused, writing something. Or so I thought. So I walked in and said, hey, Ms. Halstead. She said, hey, Tiffany, how are you? But she never lifted her head. She was steadily writing. Actually, she was sketching in her sketchbook. So again, I've been an artist since I was, I don't know, three or four years old. I've always loved to draw and paint. So I was intrigued. So I walked up to her and she continued sketching in her journal. And I said, wow, Miss Halstead, she probably was around at that time, maybe 35 or 40. I said, Miss Halstead, wow, you sketch? She said, yeah, I sketch all the time. During her breaks, all the time I said, wow. And somehow we got on the conversation of how her mother treated her when she was growing up. And she said, you know, Tiffany, mind you, I was about 14 or 15 years old. She said, you know, Tiffany, when I was growing up, uh, we would go to church. She's a Christian as well. She said, when we went to church, my mom told me it was okay for me to bring my sketchbook to church. I said, really? She said, yeah, my mom said it's okay to sketch in church because the mind of an artist or a creative person is very unique. Actually, when you're sketching, you're able to understand even more. You're actually taking in information and comprehending things, even though it seems like to other people, you're not paying attention. You actually are. You're activating a different side of your brain. So again, as a 15 year old, I'm taking this all in and I'm excited. I'm like, yes, okay. My teachers tell me there is this reason why we sketch and we're able to process information because actually in every one of my classes, I would always doodle. When I was in science class, biology class, I would always be doodling in my notebook, taking notes as the teacher was speaking, but I would doodle as he was teaching things before I had to write down a definition. I'd start drawing out. Maybe I would draw the frog and then write the definition of whatever science term he just taught. But I noticed that when I had my exams, I was able to remember everything that I wrote down as I was doodling. And she explained that, yes, she had used that throughout her entire life when she was at church, wherever she was in a business meeting or wherever she was, she was always sketching. And so she encouraged me to always keep a sketchbook. And so I thought about my parents. My parents have always supported me, you know, when I was growing up now as a full grown woman, it's fine, but they always supported me and they always bought sketchbooks for me. They all bought uh, pencils and pens. And I remember being at church, they always wanted us to focus on the sermon but they never told me not to draw. It was kind of like they knew the same thing my teacher knew. They would let me sketch all throughout the sermon, no problem. And I was able to understand what the pastor was saying. I never forgot what Miss Halstead said, Hal Halstead said. And even to this day, I will doodle, I will sketch during church. 
when I'm in certain meetings that don't require me to present anything. I enjoy sketching and I actually am able to grasp and comprehend the information even more. Why is this important for you as an English learner? You see, I learned my learning style. I have to sketch things out. I have to draw them out in a notebook and I'm able to comprehend them better. Know your learning style. Today, I gave you seven steps to help you speak English confidently. If one of the steps I taught you today really clicks, dive into it even more. Figure out your learning style. You might not learn the same way another English learner learns. Figure out what it is, even if it's a unique method, embrace it, and it'll take you further than you'll ever realize. Hope you enjoyed this story. I'll talk to you next time.